Boom, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to our 12th devotional here on the YouTube channel, back in the University Commons Clubhouse for another Sunday evening devotional. Super excited to be back. Um, hope you guys have had a great week and I hope you are all ready for this time of devotional. I'm super excited about just this week's message as you can see from the title, Giving It Your All. Um, once again, another burden that the Lord has laid ever so strongly on my heart, and I'm very excited to share it, and I hope it's an encouragement to you because it's been an encouragement to me, and so I'm excited to dive into it. Before I get into things, as usual, prayer requests, first link in the description. Um, I know some people have been having trouble with those, like getting them sent in and making sure they actually are received on my end. I think I've worked out the bugs with those, so let me know if that works down in the comments section below if you submit a prayer request, but... Diving into it, giving it your all. We're going to be going through three verses today, the usual, two in the book of Proverbs, one of them being our kind of uh, anchor scripture for today, and then we'll close in 2 Timothy 4. But I've just been kind of tore up the last couple days. It kind of came towards the end of the week about giving it your all. And I think there's two ways this can be interpreted just because just in interactions with other people and kind of doing some research in my own free time. I've seen this title, Giving It Your All, being interpreted two different ways. One of them is quite literally giving it your all, as in giving your entire life to Christ, being fully surrendered, being fully sought out for Him, um, not being a compartmentalized, compartmentalized Christian, um, as they talk about sometimes over at TBC. But that's one way you can interpret it, but that's not necessarily the direction I'm going to go today. Maybe in the future... But not today. When I say giving it your all, I'm talking about more of like practical every single day, like motivation, determination, you know, grit, like giving it your all for the cause of Christ and not sitting on the sideline while everybody else is playing, playing football or playing basketball, you know, quite figuratively for the kingdom of God, but actually being out there on the field and making a contribution and giving it everything you have. That's what I'm kind of wanting to go in the direction of. For this week's devotional. So I'll start in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 14. We'll go to verse 23. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. Verse 23 says, In all labor there is profit, but the talk of lips tendeth only to penury. That's the King, King James Version, obviously. Um, in other translations, I've kind of heard this translated like, In all labor there's profit, um, but laziness leads to poverty. That's kind of the thought there. In another translation, just in case you're wondering, you can flip over probably a page or two in your Bible to Proverbs 16, just two chapters over. I'm going to be in verse three. This is the keynote, kind of the anchor scripture for today's devotional. Um, verse number three, Proverbs 16 tells us, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. And finally, we're going Towards the very end of the New Testament, we're going to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4. This is an incredibly, incredibly um, famous and popular passage of Scripture. Really good. Um, both First and 2 Timothy actually have a lot of good truths in them. But 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 is where I'm putting our focus. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So that is the three verses of emphasis and to note. For today, I'm going to go back to verse number 14, or chapter 14 of Proverbs, for just for reference when we're getting to the points. But here's kind of my whole burden with this this week, is I feel like in today's society, in Christian circles, whether it's in your church, your workplace, your schools, um, in your friend groups, maybe it's you personally, I feel like there's a lot of Christians nowadays that have gotten to a place where they're getting complacent, they're getting tired, and that they're settling for so much less than they should. And I know I've talked about in previous weeks about living below your means. And obviously, I've even given a devotional out of Galatians 6, 9. Don't go where you're in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Um, but this is kind of the whole thought behind today's devotional, is that there's a lot of Christians living in that way. And I want this devotional using the Word of God to rather be an encouragement for you this week as we're about to go through it, as you're about to go through your week, no matter what that looks like to give it your all, to wake up tomorrow morning, to be encouraged, to be fired up, ready to go. Maybe you're getting burnt out. Maybe you've been tired. Maybe it's been a couple years since you've been really motivated and really sought out after God. 
and you want that to change and you want to be fully committed and you want to you want to make a recommitment so that's kind of what this devotional serves as and i'm going to give you three reasons today why you should give it your all just in case you're like you know maybe you've thought in your past your efforts were in were in vain or the world's too dark there's no changing it that soul is too lost as we talked about last week with the burden for the lost this is three reasons for you today friend, um, no matter what you're going through, no matter what season of life you're in, as to why you should give it all. Uh, number one reason is that there is profit and hard work. Quite literally, going to Proverbs 14, which is where we're at, verse 23, in all labor there is profit, but the talk of lips tendeth only to penury. This is quite literally first line, nothing too outside the box here for the first point. That's quite literally what it says. There is profit and hard work. And I mean, obviously we can relate this to a spiritual context. That's obviously the focus for today, but even in a non-spiritual context, um, whether it's something you're just trying to do personally for yourself, it could be in the gym, it could be in your classes, it could be in the workplace, no matter what you're trying to do, if you're just trying to improve your life, um, we always know that practice makes perfect. And that if you consistently do something every single day and build up those efforts over a long period of time, you're going to see progress and you're going to see results. That's quite notoriously famous for when you're going to the gym, you're trying to lose the weight, you're trying to put on muscle. If you show up to the gym every single day and you're giving it 110% effort and your diet's right and you're getting the proper rest and all that, there's going to be profit in that because you're working hard. But spiritually, this is there's no difference in that. Um, spiritually, as well as physically or mentally or whatever you're trying to do, there's profit in hard work, especially when it's hard work for the cause of Christ and for the kingdom of God. Because every single day when you wake up, and whether it's in your own personal life, you're getting in the word, you're going into your prayer closet, you're hunkering down, you're praying um, for that loved one, for any burden you have on your heart, just for the world, you're thanking God. When you're doing that personally, but then when you also go out into your community and you're evangelizing and you're spreading the gospel and you're trying to lead souls to Christ and you're trying to make a lasting impact, you're serving at your church, you're doing things like that. Maybe even you're volunteering at your local soup kitchen. I could list things off all, all day. Just really good examples of hard work. There's profit in that. And kind of how we could talked about last week with planting the seed. And sometimes you might not see that lost loved one or that lost friend get saved in your lifetime. But you plant the seed and God comes into the analogy as the gardener and he waters the seed. And then it turns into a big tree or a fruit. And you see results from it. And that's all we're called to do is to work hard, to give it 110% effort. And that there is profit in that. And I, want, I, I think there's a lot of comfort and encouragement to that to where obviously we can't do it in our own strength. We can't do it in our own efforts. But if we give it all 110% effort and lean on Jesus and lean on him for strength and lean on him for peace and comfort and all that he can bring us in a personal relationship, there will be profit in that. And we will see results when it's God's timing, whatever we're doing it for. Secondly, you can flip over to Proverbs 16 for this. You are working for something greater than yourself. That is the second reason why you should give it your all. Verse 3, Proverbs 16. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts be established. You are, whenever you get up every single day, especially as someone that is saved and in the family of Christ, everything you do is for the Lord, but it's for a cause greater than yourself. My personal life verse and one of my favorite verses um, in the entire Bible I think I've talked about this before on the channel. It's Colossians 3.23. Everything you do, do it not as unto man, but do it as unto the Lord. And that's a wonderful verse because I think it's just an amazing reminder that, you know, every single thing we do, whether it's in our classes, whether it's in the workplace, or even if it's something directly tied to God, like going to church, tithing, volunteering, serving at your soup kitchen, um, serving in the homeless shelter, um, going to the nursing home, doing things like that. You're all doing it, all those things, you're doing it for something greater than yourself. And you might not recognize it now, but you can look back at the end of your life, um, which I'm foreshadowing the third point a little bit here, but you can look back on the end of your life and see that, wow, all this work that I've done and all the tireless, tireless nights and the early mornings and the blood, the sweat, the tears, all that I put into this to my life, no matter if you're in ministry, if you're in the medical field, if you're a business owner, um, no matter what you're doing, you're doing it greater than um, for greater things. You're doing it for someone greater than yourself and something greater than yourself. And obviously I think it's very so easy to get caught up in our own personal life about results and whether it's in the gym or whether it's financially or, you know, anything like that. 
we're so caught up in the results and just seeing the fruit of it. But spiritually, sometimes you're not always going to immediately see that fruit. But I can promise you 110% without any shadow of a doubt, I can tell you confidently this evening, that if you're getting up every single morning, you're going at it, no matter what your emotions say, no matter what your feelings say, uh, no matter how tired you are or how burnt out you are, if you get up and give it your all for the cause of Christ, you're doing something greater than yourself. You're doing it for someone, for something greater than yourself. And there will be fruit in that. And there will be um, rewards for your efforts. God will see your reward. He'll see your heart. And he will bless that. Just your dedication, your sacrifice, your willingness to go serve him and go make a lasting impact. Because um, especially in today's society, that's something very rare. And that's not very common at all. And so Jesus sees that and he recognizes it. And obviously it's for good. It, all your efforts, they're not in vain. I'll close with that. Everything you do, Jesus sees it. And just rem be reminded that it's for something greater than yourself. And it's for the Lord, everything you do. And so you should be giving it 110% effort. You should be giving it your all. Don't settle for anything less than the best. And look back at the end of your life and be able to say with sure confidence that I have no regrets in terms of my effort and in terms of all the things that I did because I did it with 110% effort. I relied on the Lord for the strength. I relied on the Lord for contentment and rest. And I did everything I could and I have no regrets in that regard. Finally, the third reason why you should give it your all is that you can look back on your life with joy. Obviously, 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, one of the best passages and scriptures and on the entire Bible, I believe. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. For those that like to have a long-term outlook on life, like kind of how do I do, this is just kind of how my brain works, to look at for the future, things that I'm doing now that I know will benefit my future wife, my future kids, my grandkids, my family, my friends, I like to look at it in this regard. So this verse really resonates with me, and I'm sure it does some of you as well, that if you just keep going and you give it your all, um, you can look back at the end of your life, no matter what age that is that the Lord is calling you home, you can look back one day, um, hopefully way up in years on your deathbed, you can look back and just reflect on your life as a whole. From the very time you were born until now, you can look back and think, wow, just like 2 Timothy 4, 7 says, you have fought the good fight, fight, you have finished the course, and you have kept the faith. You didn't give up. You didn't settle for less. You didn't compromise your faith. You didn't back down for the cause of Christ. You led souls to God. You went to church. You were faithful in your attendance. You were faithful in your tithing. You were faithful in your volunteer work. You were giving a 110% effort, and you can look back with confidence. You can be proud about that, and you can recognize that it was only through the Lord's strength and only through the Lord's grace and mercy that you're able to do that. But that also in what you can control and what you could do as a person while still relying on the Lord, you did fight the good fight. You did finish the course and you did keep your faith. And you can look back on that with joy and with, I'm not going to say pride, but with joy and gladness and peace that you did that and you're not going to regret it, that you're going to look back and think, wow, even the mornings that I didn't understand why I was doing it or even when it was hard, even when I was in the midst of a storm or in the very lowest part of the valley, I still kept my faith. I fought the good fight. I finished my course. I hunkered down. I was in the word every single day. I was in my prayer closet. My prayer well was never going dry. I was pouring into people. I was discipling others. I was trying to make a lasting impact. I was trying to be a light in this world full of darkness, as we've talked about before. And because I did that, because I didn't give up, I can look back and say that 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 4, 7 applies to my life and that I don't have to read this verse. I have fought a good fight, fight. I've finished my course and I've kept the faith. I don't have to read that and kind of grimace and be filled with regret and what ifs and why did I not work harder and why did I not give it my all for the cause of Christ? Because I promise you, no matter how big or small it is, um, if it's something as big as leading a soul to Christ, like I talked about last week, or even something as small as you might think, um, sending a text message of encouragement, using scripture, discipling others, serving in your community at the soup kitchen or in the nursing home, or being faithful with your tithing and attendance at church, no matter how big or small, if you're doing it for the Lord, it matters. It's going to have eternal benefits, eternal repercussions, and nothing you do for the cause of Christ is ever in vain. Never, ever, ever. Um, please remember that and please keep that in mind as you go out through this week and for the rest of this year and for the rest of your life, quite frankly, because sometimes it's so easy for the devil to whisper lies to us and discourage us and, you know, to keep us inside, to, you know, tell us that we just need to quit working hard for him 
and that it's never going to do anything. It's never going to matter. And so we don't. But meanwhile, there's plenty of other Christians that are hunkering down despite the circumstances, despite the pains, the flaws, the failures. And they're giving it everything they got, no matter how much or little that is on that particular day. They're giving it everything for God. They're relying on him. And they're making a lasting impact for the cause of Christ that will forever, ever, ever, ever change the world, no matter how big or small it is. Um, I think oftentimes as Christians, and I'll be closing with this, is that the one day of week, the one day a week that we show up and show up for Jesus is Sundays. No matter what happens in our week, no matter how, you know, how many times we read God's word, no matter how many times we're praying, no matter how many times we're listening to worship music and praising him, we show up and show out for Jesus on Sunday. 11 o'clock hits, we're sitting in those seats, the preacher's coming up to enter a, to welcome people into church, the church service is starting. We're showing up and showing out for Jesus then, but then Monday morning comes and that Bible is sitting here like this. Our worship music is gone. We're now listening to the music of the world and we're filling our brains and our minds and our ears with garbage. And then those prayers and those people that we told them that we'd be praying for and the commitments we made to renew our prayer life and to fill up our prayer well more and to not let it grow dry. Those commitments have since passed. You suffer through the week. You know, you're not hearing from God. You're not in the word. You're not praying. And then you stumble back to Sunday just to give it your all again. That's not what we're called to do as Christians. And that's not what God intended for this life to be like for us. I truly feel like not only, yes, you should obviously show out and show up for Jesus every single Sunday. Bar none. It's the Lord's day. Dedicate this day to him. But when Monday morning comes, you need to be in this book. Your face needs to be in it. You need to be meditating on it. You need to be spending time with Christ in solitude. You need to be praying. You need to be praying. There's so many things you can be praying for. And even if it's not requests, you can be coming to the Lord in prayer, into the throne room with thanksgiving and gladness and just praising him because God is so much greater than we can ever imagine. And he's so, so good and so, so worthy of all of our praise. And we're getting into it. Tuesday morning comes doing the same thing in the word, praying, listening to worship music, encouraging that person, being a light, living with joy, having a smile on our face despite our life circumstances because what we're doing is greater than ourselves we're giving it our all and everything you do for the Lord is fruitful and it all has a purpose and it will all pay off someday. So that's my encouragement. That's my challenge. Show up and show up for Jesus every single day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And just know that no matter what you do, no matter how big or small, it's not going to be in vain. God sees your heart. He sees your efforts. He sees your labor. He's going to reward it in due season. And it's time if you've been living on the sidelines, you feel like you've been living below your means as a Christian. You haven't been doing like you need to do. You've been giving God maybe 50%, 60 70 Maybe it's a really good week. You've been giving him 80 But maybe today's the day you make a commitment with the Lord and say, you know what? I'm sorry for my past contentment and lack of desire to get up and show out for Christ. But God, today, starting today, I'm going to make a new commitment for you and I'm going to give it my all. So that's all for me. I hope you all enjoyed I'm going to pray us out and we'll close. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you're doing for us. We thank you for the word of God and how it's just such a special gift to us. And these truths that we find in Proverbs and 2 Timothy today, God, that we can go out despite our circumstances, despite our feelings, our past failures, our past sins, and we can go give it our all, not just for our own self spiritually, but for the cause of Christ. We can go out, make a lasting impact, make a difference for you, and that you see our hearts, you see our efforts, God, and we know that that doesn't go in vain. You will reward us in due season. And that you, everything we do for you, no matter how big or small, it makes a difference. It matters. And we just thank you for that, God. And I pray that this week you'd help us to do that. I pray you'd help us to keep that commitment. And that we'd make lasting impacts starting tonight for the cause of Christ that will forever change the world, forever change us and the people around us. I love you. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and all that you're doing for us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. That's all for me. I'll be back very, very soon this week with more content. Hope you're excited. I am. Love you. God bless.